Hello, and welcome to one of my Python tutorials, where I will be introducing you to subroutines. Before I do that, please remember to like, subscribe, and share my video and my channel. Let's cut to the chase. So, subroutines. So, you would have come across all of these functions in Python, which is a predefined piece of code that will be that can be reused within a program. And these are the ones we've done already. And they are examples like range, len, print, int, input. They're all functions that we've used in Python. We can, however, write our own. So, let's say we've got a simple function like this one to get us started. So this is how we would write it. And this one has got parameters in there. So, you would write def. Let's call it test function, and I'm and I'm gonna you call a parameter my name. And outside the bracket, you do shift colon. Then you enter, and then it's indented for you inside the subroutine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do print hello there, and we're just going to do my name. And then what we're going to do then is we need to call it. So we can test. We can call it test function. And we can put our name in there. Because that is your parameter. And hence, we have done a subroutine that outputs a parameter. Subroutines don't always have to have a parameter. We can, however, use more than one. So let's say I decide to do one parameter called first name and one parameter called last name. So I'm going to do, and in here, like so, I'm going to do first name, last name. And then when we go into our parameter, I've got my first name in one quote, set of quotations. I need to do a comma and then another set of quotations. And then I will need to run that. Bob's your uncle. Right there. That is how we do that. So we've done subroutine using one parameter, one using more. More than one parameter. So parameters can be quite good to a point. We can, however, have return values in our function, in our subroutine. So let's say I want to do def pass check. And then in that subroutine, I'm going to do mark total. Shift colon. So shift semicolon to get a colon. And then we go in. Then we need percent will equal mark divided by the total. And we want to times that by 100. So that's what we want there. So then we need, then we can do if percent is greater than or equal to 60, then we're going to return pass. Else, we're going to return fail. We're going to return pass, which needs to be in double quotes. And in quotes, we need to have fail there. Okay, so that is what we got there. Then we need to come out of the subroutine, print, pass check, and then I'm going to do 30, 60. Then I'm going to run it. We know that's a fail. So it's not over 60. Okay, let's say I wanted to do 60, 60 pass. Okay, let's try 60, 70. Pass. 60 out of 100. Still a pass. Let's try 55 out of 100. Fail. Because if it's greater than or equal to 60, it's going to say it's going to say pass. Otherwise, it's going to say fail. So, 
so what we've done so we can make functions for a subroutine perform a calculation and return some information to the main part of the program so if a teacher wants to set different tests it may be well have a different number of points all papers however have some pass mark which is 60 percent so we can write that subroutine to allow the teacher to type in a pupil's mark and a total score and we told whether the pupil has passed or failed okay let's go a little bit further and let's see if we can actually improve it so what we what we will need to do in this case is make it be stored as variables so we could say the pupil has passed and then here we could say the pupil has failed and then what we can do instead we can pass variables in so we can call ours exam score and then what we're going to do is int input enter the exam score and then what we've got to do then is do total so what we need then exam score total Total within our pass check subroutine. So let's check to see if the code is as it should be. Yes, it is. Right, I'm going to do 30 out of 100. Fail. I'm going to do 100 out of 100. Pass. 59 out of 100. Fail. 60 out of 100. Pass. So you can see what we got there. So we have done, so the subroutine pass check is what's working out, is basically working out a mark divided by the total times 100. And working out is it over 60 or under 60. And then outside the subroutine, we're having exam score and total typed in, passed in. And then we're printing the pass, and then we're printing the pass check subroutine being called. And we're using the two parameters based on the numbers that we've inputted. Okay. So, so subprograms are blocks of code that perform specific tasks, and they can be called on, a, on a, at any time in a program to run that code. You can write a block of code, and it can be used and reused at different times during the program. And the program is simpler to understand as the code is grouped together into chunks. So you can define a subprogram and pass variables between them. So let's say we got a subprogram. Let's say we got a subprogram that's written with subprograms. So below is what I'm about to do is work you is show you this example and show you it working. That we would not and it's an example of a simple program we would normally create without subprograms. But I've written it with subprograms so you can see how it works so I'm gonna click run this code for you and I'm gonna show you what it does so we've got the subroutine so I'm in the get name so it's asked me to enter my name so I'm gonna do that and then it's gonna return and then what it's gonna do is gonna print the message username and output username Hence it's gone into this subroutine, and then in the main, it's getting the name and then it's printing the username. So first we go into the main, user, print message, username, coming out of here based on the username in this subroutine. So we've got a set of brackets, no parameters, and then we've got a subroutine that's passing a parameter called username. And that's the variable using the get name subroutine. So then the main function is calling the other two. It's calling the other two functions there. So that's essentially what's happening there. So 
you can see that we've got a lot of inputs and outputs there. We can make subroutines a lot more complex. So I'm going to go through the first three tasks here. So we've got a basic piece of code. So I'm going to use this template say my name. So I'm going to just type in def say my name brackets colon and there we go. Then I will type in then I will type all of this in. Remember to put the correct quotations. Then I'm going to run it and it's going to call the same my name subroutine. That is if it ever actually calls, which it has. So that's why it's done. So we've done that function there. Alright, so let's say we were to remove it. Run it. It's not going to do anything because we haven't got anything that's going to call the same my name. So, I'm going to try and do a loop that I'll say it a hundred times. Okay, let's try it, shall we? So if you remember, it's for i in range. Then we're going to do 0 to 99. Then we're going to do colon. Then we are going to get that, and then we're going to do say my name. Then we're going to run it, and we're going to see that loop a hundred times. And voila! It has done all of this 100 times there. Okay? So that, I've just gone through the first three tasks using a very basic subroutine there. If you've enjoyed my video, please like, subscribe and share, and I look forward to making the next video for you. Goodbye for now.